three, two, one, zero. Lift off. Oh. As they exist today, do not Once President Eisenhower made the decision to take photos from satellites, the inner row then faced the technical challenge of getting those images safely back to Earth where they could be analyzed by awaiting photo interpreters. An ingenious and rather simple solution emerged. Drop the undeveloped film in a bucket and have an airplane snag it in midair before it splashed into the sea. You're looking at an object that's going about 200 feet a second. This is the story of the bucket catchers and their historic last KH-8 gambit catch in April 1986. I mean, I felt so much pressure. Don't mess up, this is your chance. The job of catching buckets was assigned to a handful of intrepid pilots and capture crews at the 6594th Test Group out of Hickam Air Force Base, Hawaii. They called themselves the Star Catchers, and their aircraft was the JC-130. It was an elite assignment. Somebody usually had to will it to you, or you know, somebody had to die for you to go into that squadron. Between 1963 and 1986, with the exception of just a handful of lost buckets, the Star Catchers snatched and grabbed nearly 170 buckets. In the sometimes chaotic world of catching valuable film free-falling from space, practice makes near perfect. To stay in the lineup and to move up in the order on who would get the next catch, you had to have a, a 90% uh, uh, success rate. Actual practice system was a shell. It was mm -hmm. loaded with concrete yeah. and uh, that was used as a temporary weight. It was very competitive. I mean, they wanted you to do well. I mean, went on practice, but it was always, oh, so you missed one or it just splashes into the water. So. She sleeps with the fishes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the sensation of snagging a bucket out of thin air was unforgettable. Well, you, you first felt this parachute that you went over because it, there's a burble of air right on top of the chute, so you feel a little bump. Then you kind of feel the airplane pull backwards a little yeah. bit. Yeah. And the winch basically it takes out a lot of the, the, the suddenness, so you don't have a huge mm -hmm. uh, change of airspeed or feeling like that, but you know you've you got something out there. But with the advent of digital imaging in the 1980s, the days of bucket catching were numbered. We were always uh, switching back and forth for an actual crew that's going to make a catch. I was the aircraft commander and Mike was the co-pilot. One airplane would go out very early, like maybe four or five o'clock in the morning as the telemetry airplane, so that they were tracking the system and they would be heading up toward um, Alaska. Everything was done in Hawaii, you know, within maybe 500 to 1,000 miles, mm -hmm. either north or south. That's where yeah. it always came down. There were five airplanes and all five of them had recovery aircraft commanders in it. There are two more uh, airplanes out there with uh, air refueling capability and there's usually at least two or three or maybe four helicopters so that they can bring in the pararescue guys. But we were number one, so if we were messing up, then Lead would say, you know, okay, number two or whatever, you know, you, you have a try it, because we were all stacked at different altitudes. And we saw it maybe around, I don't know, 40, 45,000 feet. It was pretty high up there, we would see the chute, but you could not make a, a pass until 15,000 feet. You know, you're looking at an object that's going about 200 feet a second coming at you. When you're actually making the approach, you only got a few seconds. I mean, I felt so much pressure um, as we're, you know, we're the crew. You know, don't mess up. This is your chance. We caught it on the, on the first pass. The, the, there was so much adrenaline. Yeah, it, it was very kind of an intense feeling and going, all right, we got it. But it wasn't over yet because now they had to reel it in. <laughs> yeah. And that's a whole different... Uh, process and those guys are really good because you have to watch out for the hooks and everything but once it was on board said like you got the airplane I got to go back and you know touch it yeah. <laughs>